Hello crafty friends, my name is Jessica and welcome back to my channel. Today we have color blend number 11 and for this color blend series we are using aspen, sage, and pine. If you're new here these are the positively saturated inks and I absolutely love them. I've been doing a color blend series here on YouTube and this is number 11. I'll place a comment card up in the upper right hand corner for you to see the full playlist. We're gonna go ahead and get started. This is the ink blending paper that I like to use. This is Simon Says Stamp 130 pound smooth white cardstock and it's my absolute favorite for ink blending. There are many ink blending papers on the market. This is just the one that I prefer. There are others such as Not Your Mama's Cardstock, Hammer Mill Smooth, as well as Bristol Smooth. Those are all really great papers that would do great for ink blending. Now we're just getting started here with Aspen and now we're into Sage and then we're gonna move into Pine. I like to use brushes for my ink blending, especially with my dye inks. I feel like I get the best results when I use brushes. Also, if you're new here, a little bit about these inks. These are dye inks, they are water reactive, but they are the best inks that I've ever played with that have the ability to smooth back. So while it looks a little bit splotchy here, later on in the video, we are going to see that these inks dry back and we'll do a close up on how they smooth completely back and you won't get any of the harsh lines or the dappling that you're kind of seeing here now. This is a really great color combo that would be great for a forest scene or a cabin scene or a monotone. Maybe you wanna do some gold cardstock would look great with this trio. But this is Aspen, Sage, and Pine. So we're gonna go ahead and do a quick cleanup and then we're gonna move on to the third panel. This video I filmed very late at night one night and I, it, I was a little bit off my game, so I don't have my little paper that I pull out to tell us what we're doing, but here I'm gonna do it verbally. We're gonna do cabbage to aspen to tide pool. I'm just gonna come out and say it that this ends up being my favorite panel of this series. Absolutely love this color. I actually am going to be turning it into a card in my next upload, so be sure to subscribe ring the bell notification so that you don't miss out, but this panel is going to be turned into my next card video. So we're started off with cabbage and then we're moving into aspen. Aspen and cabbage do look very similar and lighting is always hard when you're filming videos, but I promise you can kind of see here that it's different, but later on they kind of look a little bit more similar as they dry back, but they are different in Person. But I love what Tide Pool does to these greens and the way that it elevates this trio. Now, earlier I mentioned that these inks are water reactive. And what that means is that if you take water and you put it on a brush, or I like to use my fingertips, and flick it onto one of these panels, the color is going to lift off wherever that water touches. So you then would place either a cloth or a paper towel over it and it would create a very lovely ghosting. So this is cabbage, aspen, and tide pool. There's also some really fun effects that you can get with these inks just using different products like glazes or um, shimmer powders and just lots of opportunities. So this third trio is going to be sage, zest, and cappuccino. I'm really trying to kind of think outside of the box when I'm doing these color panels so that you can see some unexpected things or color combos. And I hope this is one that's kind of unexpected for you. I love the way that cappuccino brings this bright, zesty, warm yellow down and kind of kind of creates the same kind of tone that sage is. It's really, really fun. So one of the other things that I like to talk about in these videos is the light handedness that's needed. I re-inked all of my ink pads as you should if you haven't lately or when you're getting ready to color blend. A juicy ink pad is best. But what that means sometimes, which I'm still learning because usually my ink pads are on the drier side, is that you need to go in with a light hand. And sometimes that can be really hard, but one of the ways that I find it helpful is by gripping the 
the head of my brush, like you can see here with my two fingers, and that lets me go in really light-handed, which is a good example here of this cappuccino. I went in probably the lightest with this color out of every one of them. And it's just really good to go in light because if you go in light, you can always add in more color, but you cannot take it away. But look at that, what that cappuccino did to that zest. It definitely kind of brought it down a little bit and kind of made a very cohesive color blend. So this is sage, zest, and cappuccino. Now I'll draw your attention up to the panels in the left-hand corner. You will see that they are starting to dry back. That first one that we did there, that pine color I noticed was really splotchy at first, but now you're kind of seeing it's smoothing. So here I am, I finally brought in the paper. So we're gonna go back through these real quick. This is Cabbage, Aspen, and Tide Pool. Usually I bring this little booklet out for each blend. This is Sage, Zest, and Cappuccino. And now we're gonna go into Pine, Seafoam, and Peony, which is the brightest and kind of the most, I don't wanna say odd, but maybe, maybe odd's the right word, color combo, but it ends up working in my opinion. We do get that fourth color when we blend seafoam and peonies, so that's always fun when you can get additional colors by blending two colors over top of each other. But it's just, while it's fun, it's definitely not in my realm of favorites out of all the other ones. You know, for the cabbage and aspen and tide pool, I instantly knew what I wanted to do once that panel was dried back. And then the sage zest and cappuccino, I had some ideas on what I could do with that as well. But this one, I, I, I struggle with some ideas on how to bring it together. I think maybe some black die cuts would be really good. That would kind of help bring down the brightness of the peony and the sea foam. And when I say that, I don't mean to like dull the color, but just kind of dial it back a little bit because peony is quite an intense pink and paired with that sea foam they they are quite a force <laughs> so now we're just going to go in and add the pine and this is definitely a color you want to start off light-handed with because it is quite potent as you layer it down dark i didn't do a very good job with it because i got this ink pad extra juicy and then i felt like i had to cover up my brush strokes so Got a little heavy handed on this one. Would these colors have been maybe a little bit more enjoyable if I hadn't gone so heavy handed? Potentially. But like I said, I think it's just that I don't have a vision for this panel and that's why I'm struggling with it. But this is Peony, Tide Pool, and Pine. So we're gonna go ahead and do a quick cleanup and then we're gonna go ahead and dry these panels off camera so that you can see what they look like in their dry back state. I just want to let you know that I do have all of the colors and the products that we use today linked in the description box below. I do use affiliate links. And so what that means is that if you shop with me, I get a small commission. So that first panel was Aspen, Sage, and Pine. And look at how beautifully it dried back. That pine color is definitely more muted and more blendable into the sage. Now this is Cabin to Aspen to Tide Pool, my favorite panel of the series today. This is Sage, Zest, and Cappuccino. Just the colors, they just blend back so beautifully. And then to wrap it up, we have Peony, Seafoam, and Pine. Well, that's the color cards for today. I hope you enjoyed these. Please let me know which of the color combos was your favorite in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you at the next video. Take care.